Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week called Brightburn. The latest picture by producer James Gunn, the same man who gave us Slitter, along with Super and Guardians of the Galaxy films, where he actually brought in his younger brother and cousin to write the screenplay for him. It's about a young alien boy who was raised on Earth by two parents who are known as the Briars who soon realize that he has superpowers and he's actually using them to terrorize the entire town of Brightburn, Kansas. Yeah. So think of it this way, like this is a, a superhero horror film where what was it like if Superman became evil? I mean, aside from Superman free, no, we get an evil Superman who terrorizes people instead of uh, saving them. So it is a promising uh, premise right there. But it does come across as being more of a, a child killer story, but in a whole different way. Anyway, it stars Elizabeth Banks, David Denham, yes, from uh, The Office, which I find it really interesting because both Banks and Denham were previously in Power Rangers 2017. Yes, she played Rita Repulsa, and Denham played um, Jason's father, yeah, the Red Ranger. I guarantee you this, <laughs> I read really watch this one, but I guarantee you that even Brightburn is better than this. But okay, okay, I'm... I know, I know. That, that movie still pisses me off to this day. Jackson A. Dunn, Abraham Klinscales, Christian Finlayson, Jennifer Holland, Emmy Hunter, Matt Jones, Murdoch Hackner, Becky Wallstrom, Terrence Rosemore, Gregory Allen Williams, Elizabeth Becca, and Humphrey, Steve Algy, Stephen Blackerheart, and a cameo appearance by Michael Rooker and Wayne Wilson. It's written by Brian and Mark Gunn, as I mentioned, both uh, younger brother and younger cousin of James Gunn's, and it's directed by David Yavetsky. The movie begins set in Brightburn, Kansas in 2006. We meet a couple living in a farm named Tori and Kyle Breyer, both played by Elizabeth Banks and David Denham. But when a spaceship crashes near their farm, that's where they spotted a baby boy inside. And they adopted him and called his name Brandon, who will soon be played by Jackson A. Dunn. And they actually had hid the spaceship all the way inside their barn cellar. Twelve years later, the ship begins transmitting an alien message, which this is where Brandon suddenly discovers that he has superhuman strength and a vulnerability. He actually sleepwalks straight to the barn, opens the cellar, and chants a craft message, but Tori suddenly came by, found out where he's at, and he intervenes. Hitting puberty, Brandon becomes completely disobedient and disrespectful towards everyone, especially when they were celebrating Brandon's birthday at the diner. Yeah, you know, just giving him um, a, uh, a banana split. And his uncle, Nora, and Aunt um, Merle had gave him a, a birthday gift, which turns out to be a hunting rifle. But Kyle refuses because um, he's just too young to have one. But Brandon just demands the, his father to, to let him have it. And this is why he started getting really rough on him. And as you may notice, though, by the time he hits the table, 
you notice how the arcade game started to shut off and then shut off. Same goes with the the lights and everything around. Like the power starts to go completely crazy. So both Kyle and Tori had forced them out of the diner and headed straight home for punishment. But Kyle suddenly suspects something is wrong with him. Yeah along with Tori as they find out that he actually has photos of, you're going to love this, lingerie and swimsuit models, surgical diagrams, and even graphic photos of human organs. I mean, wow. I mean, now we know why this guy is completely crazy. But it only gets worse. Um, especially when they went on a family camping trip where Kyle suddenly talks to uh, Brandon about you know sexuality and, and masturbation yeah it's pretty awkward for him to talk about it hoping that this would be alright for him to use which that leads to what happened that same night where he actually invaded um, his uh, classmate Caitlin who's uh, played by Emmy Hunter, which at this rate he uses a superhuman strength to actually peek inside her room. Yes, because he actually opens up the laptop and wouldn't stop. I wanted to assume that maybe he was uh, trying to hoping to get to see her or at this rate become a pervert or something. But she did begin to notice that he was there. But returning home, and then, even worse, Kyle suddenly uh, came back to the barn, and this is where he starts to uh, open the coop hinges all the way, and actually kills all the chickens. Yes, he, he actually slaughtered them from the chicken coop. So something is really going wrong with uh, Brandon as we speak. That's where we led to the trust fall exercise at school, you know, where Brandon was actually chosen to have have all the kids to push him around like that. You know, that that's what it's called, the trust fall, where they where it's sort of like a game that they have to play. But then he fell. And then when Caitlin suddenly found out about him, and then he calls him a pervert, yeah, that's when um, he got up, um, ready to uh, get picked up by Caitlin, and suddenly crushes her hand, and was suspended uh, at school for only uh, a few days. So. So Mer Lee, who works as a school counselor, was requiring him to meet so that way they'll explain about his behavior and stuff. But then Caitlin's mother uh, found out about this, and this is where she wanted to... Uh, yeah, Caitlin's mother, of course, is named um, Erica, who's played by Becky Wallstrom, who wanted him to go to jail for what he did to her daughter. So as, as things have been going completely wrong, Brendan suddenly levitates above the open cellar, chanting the, the message that he was given from the alien. He fell, cut himself, and this is where he, he suddenly gets injured. And then Tori reveals the truth about his arrival on Earth, which causes him to be completely um, furious that he starts to trash everything around at the house and decides to run away but even wrote and decides to run away and, and actually actually uh, wrote a message which says take the world which he actually wrote on his uh, notebook yeah which actually predicts that, yes, he's going to become a superhero, but more evil and powerful than ever before. And this is where he comes up with his own plans. He even has uh, his own logo, 
that he created so that way we'll know that he was there yeah. so it's like a sort of like a Bluetooth or or a fork type of uh, logo that they had to use well we also learned that he can even um, take out a lawnmower that he that he tries to start up but he had trouble with it and then he accidentally flew all the way up in the air landed there and this is where you see the uh, the outside of the uh, lawnmower and, and he just stops it you know through his hand or even when he starts to chewing on his fork and and it actually bends that sort of yeah. as it continues to go on Brendan decided to start going on a killing spree where he actually kills uh, Erica Caitlin's mom because she works as as a waitress at the diner even worse even after he had to uh, he had to warn uh, Merrily about what's going to happen about his behavior and everything that's happening he also kills his uncle yeah, Uncle Nora. But then he pretends that, you know, he, he actually came home from school during a soccer practice. That's why he was all shirtless, thinking that, you know, the kids had pushed him into the mud. But then they soon realized that he was lying about what he just did. Uh, Sheriff Deaver, who's played by Gregory Allen Williams, who joins him with uh, his partner, Deputy Ives, who's played by Ann Humphrey, are basically suspecting about what's happening to these mysterious deaths of, of these two and who's doing this, especially when they found out about the logo that he spotted when he took pictures of it. He also spotted it inside a diner. So Tori and Kyle have soon realized that Bren has been doing something completely evil. And it can only get worse for them to try to stop them before it's too late. So that's basically the story of the film. And there are a lot of um, horrific uh, death scenes that you definitely spot in the movie. Yeah, they're totally gruesome, a bit gory at times. Like, for example, when... When Brendan actually uh, took uh, Erica, just ready to attack him while he was wearing the uh, the mask that he has, yeah, a wood hooded mask and a cape. Well, before he started to uh, fly off and attack her inside the uh, the cellar of of the diner. Well. He started to use all of his powers, and suddenly, suddenly all that glass shards from the fluorescent lights went straight into her eye. Yeah, because we always see that in horror films where, where someone gets stabbed in the eye, and all that blood starts to come right out, which is kind of hard for people to see it. And I have a hard time seeing it this way. So she was ready to be attacked. And then there's even another gruesome death scene where Brendan attacks uh, Uncle Nora just after he spotted him underneath the, the closet just when he was about to uh, brush his teeth. You know, he just uh, got home from from a local bar that he had to drink with his buddies, including the cow. But he was telling him to, to get back to the house. So he was trying to take him back home to his parents, but then, but then he was ready to attack him. He actually lifts up uh, the truck and just suddenly puts him all the way down, and it goes straight into his jaw. Yes, I never thought I would definitely see a character actually getting his jaw dropping completely, and that was a very crazy scene right there that it, it really got to me <laughs> um, and I guess there's a little bit of a spoiler here but when 
both Tori and and Kyle was ready to go after him. I mean, yes, even Kyle was ready to shoot him, but then Brandon just suddenly uh, uses his powers to actually uh, to actually uh, as he shoot lasers directly from his eye and went straight into his eyes and sh and it goes all the way straight into his head and, and dies before Brendan had to go after uh, Tory but he also went after the sheriff and and the deputy where he's just like flying around through the house all the way around best he can and then starts attacking them, blood starts of sp spreading around you know, crushing, the, crushing their faces and everything that sort of thing yeah so I had a lot of great uh, special effects that they had right there most of all of which were CGI uh, as for the actors though um, Elizabeth Banks uh, did a fine job so was uh, David Denham and Jackson A. Dunn, the, the real star of the film, who plays uh, Brandon and Brightburn. Yeah, this is his character name, directly from the fictionalized town of Kansas. So this is not Smallville. <laughs> uh, he's very good. I mean, he's actually very uh, smart and intelligent, especially with that scene where he begins to know about the, the wasp. And explains fully about that, even though kids were teasing him and stuff. Um, so, but it does have some problems um, with the way the story goes because it does become more like a standard uh, horror film, like just another child killer film in that sort of way that just kind of brings its potential to a halt like, some characters can be pretty stupid because you know they're going to get killed easily no matter how hard they try or the fact that they made a big mistake on on adopting the an alien boy it turns out to be evil but it's a funny because you know he was normal at the at the beginning but then but ever since uh, the aliens uh, has sent a message to him and starts to give him the powers, this is where he starts to do a lot of evil things. Um, I'm also going to try to mention the, the mid credits scene too, which this is where we had a cameo appearance by Michael Worker playing the Big T, who's a conspiracy theorist on the internet, on YouTube, which is really cool to see him, where he's talking about what he about all the uh, the links between the between Brendan and all these, these deaths that we're seeing coming around like around the world everywhere it goes that's why they have all these news reports they had to play a stupid song by Billy Elish called Bad Guy yeah this is a manufacturer pop singer who's only 17 years old she has blue hair uh, the song goes like this I'm a bad guy. Duh. That song. You hear that on the radio, too. That just doesn't work in a movie like Brightburn. I mean, couldn't they have picked a better song than that? God, I mean, today's pop songs just really suck. And it just continues to go on and on with these shitty, muffled, uh, auto-tune voices that they use. It's starting to sound like a robot. I, I don't know, they, they could have picked something better. And I think the film could have been a lot better if it wasn't distracted with that song. Just just keep it the way it is, man. I, I would have loved to hear what Michael Worker has to say when he's spotting the something happening all around at Brightburn, Kansas, and and then we learn that there's other super beings like him that does the same thing. So, it's like, who's going to stop him? Hoping that maybe Crimson Bolt, yeah, 
which Wayne Wilson played, which we spotted him previously in Super. Who knows? Maybe, maybe he might be the one who'll stop him if that's all he takes. But unfortunately, he's not a powerful guy. <laughs> Although it was nice to see him too, um, but only as a photograph. Um, so the score was done by Timothy Williams. Uh, creates sort of a uh, a dramatic uh, type of score that could really work and has some nice cinematography and editing. Um, but I think the writing needs needs more improvements uh, for this film, and I just think the guns should know better about that. I mean, I guess you could say, some people say maybe a, I guess you could say it's a parody of the whole uh, superhero genre, but deep down of it, it is a serious uh, horror film that's um, trying to be as, as uh, scary as possible, in that sort of way, like terrifying, and more gruesome, gory, and even sort of like a slasher movie in a way. But it does have some interesting direction by David uh, Yervasky and so I think he did a great job combining the idea but I just think the film could have been better they made the characters uh, written not as your typical dumb characters or or not to mention all the jump scares that this movie had. Yes there were there are plenty of jump scares in this film, and I think they really need to cut that down, too, to make this movie better. So either way, um, it's a mixed bag. So that's all I could say. Um, despite of um, the cast of Elizabeth Banks, David Denham, and Jackson A. Dunn, you know, they were great, but I just think they need some improvement with the script. Um, get rid of the jump scares. Stop putting that stupid song by Billy Elish. I mean, just just add more meat to potatoes. And, and that's all I had to say. So that's Brightburn, and I give the movie as a mixed review two and a half stars. So it has a promising premise, but it didn't live up to its potential like we were hoping for. So it's not bad, but not great. And not perfect either. So, more like a decent movie. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.